on a normal film and, you know, anything from 11 to 18 months on a Potter film, um, you know, it's, you're all striving towards the same thing. I mean, there might be times when you feel like you're pulling in different directions, but ultimately you are all going the same way and trying to make a good film together. And that's, that's something that I think is very special. And, uh, and yeah, I, so I, I think that's a, a healthy respect for the workings of a film set, I think, has certainly not changed. Um, it, there was lots of, lots of crying um, from myself, Emma and Rupert. I should, Emma, Rupert and I, I should say. And, um, and, uh, and then... And the crew as well, you know, because a lot of them have been there for ten years as well. So there were lots of tears from from everybody, really. And um, it was it was very sad. And at the time, I remember sort of being quite inconsolable for like two hours. And then uh, and then four hours later, I was on a plane and I was reading a script for The Woman in Black, which I'm now filming. So we we move on. But um, <laughs> that was fast. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, the Woman in Black. It's an adaptation of the uh, Susan Hill novel and. Um, it's uh, it's a gothic horror movie, and it's um, I play um, a 24-year-old uh, father of one whose wife has died, and um, uh, a lawyer who who gets sent to a um, to the house of a woman who has recently died to um, to go through all her documents and sort of make a you know collate them all, and um, and the house that he goes to is is. Haunted, not to give too much away. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's there. Well, that we we did take a bit of a leaf out of their book in terms of that sort of sexed up Victoriana kind of look. Um, in terms of in terms of the costumes, you know, I, it was uh, it was. You know, it's a, I, have a, I have an amazing costume in this film. I love it. It's just, it's a very simple grey suit, but it's just, it's really well fitted, and it's a nice waistcoat, and I've got a fob watch, and I get little sideburns as well. I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying, I'm really enjoying this look. It's how I would dress all the time if that wouldn't get me beaten up in London. <laughs> um, um, when, when Emma was sitting here, she was talking about her experiences at Brown University. Is all right. college in your future, or? I don't think so. On yeah, I'm just going to try and make a career for myself. I think I, it's you know, Emma's the most academic out of all three of us by quite a long way. <laughs> so I don't think like university would have been on the cards for myself and Rupert. Like I think to be honest, I found uh, you know I found school. Whoa, I found school. Uh, very, thank you, Crouching. That was like that scene from Crouching Tiger. <laughs> um, but um, I found school very very hard. Um, uh, you know, I got I got good results most of the time, but then I, I dropped out a year early um, because I I was going to rehearsals for Equus. And to be honest, I think when you find something that like I found something that I'm that I'm I have some aptitude to, with, and you know I'm I, I hesitate to say I'm good at because it's you know I'm so far away from being the finished article and I've still got a lot to learn. But I certainly think I'm better at this than I would be at anything else. Um, so I'm going to try and just focus on that and, and you know, uh, try and make as, as, as long a career for myself as possible. Is the public used to you now? Or um, I think around my area they are. They're quite used to me. It's kind of, oh, there he is again. But, um, but also it's, it's, it's kind of, I think I, I do, it's the advantage of being five foot five is that, you know, sort of no one really looks twice. It is if you're just a, um, a, a, a skinny short ass in a crowd doesn't attract too much attention. Um, Was it ever out of control? Not really. Only, only in Japan. In Japan, it went it went wild when I was in Japan. When I was over there, they just it's amazing because it's it manages to be both aggressive and incredibly restrained at the same time. In that they will charge towards you, and then, but it is like there is an invisible barricade two foot from you, and they will not go past that. It's it's really incredible. Oh yes, yeah. It is like having having some sort of force field protectively. I mean. It, but when I arrived in Japan when I was 13, there were 5,000 people waiting in the airport arrival sound, screaming. I mean, it was, it was pretty intense. I mean, it was, it was, you know, I am a beetle in Japan. I, I went to, I went to a, there was a, a program in Japan called uh, Let's Go to School, which is like, um, it's this thing where these two girls have, have written off to, um, to, 
to the uh, to the programme makers and said, we would like so-and-so to come to our school. And normally it's kind of big Japanese celebrities, so they're not used to, like, you know, other, other famous people coming around. Anyway, these two girls wrote up and said, we would like Dana Radcliffe to come to our school. And these two very excited young Japanese guys in tuxes who present the show, very, very nice men, um, they, uh, they sort of said to me, well, these people don't know you're coming, so it's going to be a really big surprise. Anyway, we got around the corner and there were hundreds of girls leaning out of the windows to a dangerous degree, you know. And, and, I, wa and I was walking inside and there was actually a moment when I, I sort of bumped into a girl by accident. I said, oh, sorry. And she just, just fainted, you know. It's just, it's bizarre. So it's a very strange country for me to go to. But it's, uh, yeah, it's quite fun. Anyway, I think I'm getting moved on, guys. Sci-Fi Talks look at Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1 continues in a moment. You know, I really want to tell you about something exciting for your iPhone or your Droid, and that's the Sci-Fi Talk app. It's the only SF podcast available for the iPhone, the iPod Touch, the iPad, and also the Droid. You can listen to podcast interviews, press conferences, and convention roundtables from New York and San Diego Comic-Con. There's also specially produced podcasts and behind-the-scenes videos as special bonus features. All this for only $1.99. Get it at the iTunes store and for the droid at appbrain.com. Get your SF on the go, where you go, with Sci-Fi Talk, cool conversations. My name is Gareth Edwards. I am the director of a new film called Monsters, and you're listening to Sci-Fi Talk. Back to the press conferences for Harry 